This is surprisingly pleasant for... Hey music friends, this is Davi Vasca, I'm a music composer for games and we already did German, we did Ludwig, so today we're going to listen to and talk about the theme for Lady Maria of the Astro Clock Tower from Bloodborne, one of the most requested themes here on the channel and I, I know I say that a lot but it's true every time, you guys request a lot of stuff, so let's go! Wow, there's a lot going on, right from the start. Ooh. Beautiful solo. Oh. It's a duet. So, first of all, in very true Bloodborne fashion, they're just going full disturbing here at this, at this first part, they're doing something like this. So it's very, very disturbing, right? And you can hear a lot of this, this type of chord here, which is a, I call here on the channel a very, very uh, disturbing chord. It's, it's one of the most disturbing chords there are, and they use it everywhere in Bloodborne, of course, because why not? But other than that, there's this solo uh, cello here, here, which sounds very sad and dramatic and then it becomes a duet with the violin but it's very interesting because again i've never played bloodborne but but as i listen to more and more of these tracks i learn more and more about the game and i think it's very interesting the use of these solo instruments in this in these tracks because uh german for example he was the first hunter uh, Ludwig was also one of the old hunters and as far as I understand uh, Lady Maria is also one of the old hunters so these songs are all about individuals the, there's they are the the stories and the feelings of these individuals so it becomes very fitting to use solo instruments in these tracks because a solo instrument is the the express, expression is the voice of one single human being playing an, an instrument it's one voice it's one individual so it becomes a very unique and individual expression of humanity here and what what an expression it is it's a very very beautiful duet and about the duet of course the obvious thing that we could say is that well it's a, it's a duet because it's a it's a fight it's a it's a duel you know two characters uh, fighting so two voices and of course that would be a, a a valid interpretation but this duet caught my attention for how harmonious it is uh, it's not nearly as disturbing as it was in the beginning it's very harmonious and extremely sad too but to me, it doesn't sound like two opposite voices. It almost sounds like two voices that are in agreement about being extremely sad and, and in a lot of anguish and tragedy. Listen to how much sadness there is in this. Like this high note on the violin here. There's so much tragedy in it. So, again, I don't know much about the story, uh, so I don't know if the two uh, voices in some sort of agreement uh, make sense at all. You guys, let me know. Oh, the brass. The brass gives this a lot of... A lot of dignity, you know. You know, brass instruments are really good at communicating, you know, a class and regalness and dignity. So that probably says something about Lady Maria's personality here. When you compare this, for example, with something like uh, Ludwig the Accursed, 
for example, it's completely different. This feels human. There's class to it. There's there's grace. Even the chords that they're playing here, it's a very simple and classy sequence. So he's basically just repeating this. Sounds very stereotypically like classical music, right? So I guess Maria is a classy lady. This sounds very human. There's a lot of humanity in this. A lot of sadness. Oh. This is surprisingly pleasant for... Wow, I don't even know what to say. Why do I always fall for this? I always think I have these Bloodborne tracks all figured out and then they hit me with a choir of... Uh, I meant to say a, a ton of bricks, but I guess a, a choir of bricks kind of makes sense as well. This is amazing. And listen... This sounds ambiguous. Like this, like this for example. This part here feels ambiguous in a very interesting way in which uh, it feels like the track is alternating between moments of, you know, triumph and glory and you know class and dignity and grace and moments of tragedy and evil and suffering and torment and insanity and the the track the track keeps alternating and it, it keeps giving you false hopes that it will eventually settle for one of these two like here for example listen to how positive this chord sounds this one sounds very glorious you know and heroic and the way that the, they play it here they they have to have done this intentionally they they it feels like they're setting up for a very common uh, heroic sequence that you know video game uh, orchestral uh, soundtracks love to do which is this one they, they are playing this chord here and they set up as if they want to go this way here Yay, happy. It feels like they're going this way, but listen to where they go instead. Positive chord. They go here instead. So, instead of going to the happy chord, they go here, which is the chord from the beginning that I that I said, remember, that is one of the most uh, disturbing chords that there are. So they keep alternating and faking us out and, and going from triumphant and, and graceful to tragic and, and disturbing. And actually, now that I think about it, that is something that mimics the rest of the track as well, because the track began very uh, disturbingly, right? With this disturbing chord here at the, the very beginning and then it evolved into something a bit more human, a bit more classy and, and a bit more pleasant, remember? Uh, and then the, the, when the choirs came in it seems like these two things uh, got fused together and now it seems like a struggle. I, I don't know if this has something to do with Maria's story and Maria's personality but there seems to be a very cruel back and forth, a, a, a struggle between triumph and heroism and tragedy 
and sadness. Tense chord. Okay. So a little rest now. It calm down a little bit. Another very positive chord. The struggle, the struggle continues, so much tension, oh and the, oh my god, the solo soprano at the back. There's no rest. Wow, this is crazy. I kept expecting the, the struggle that I talked about uh, before to settle for one side of, or the other. Uh, and, and this is Bloodborne, let's be honest. I expected the, the struggle to settle for the side of tragedy, but they're denying us even that and, and Bloodborne continues to be good at surprising me. They're denying us even the, the little rest, the little peace and satisfaction that we would get from the song settling, even for the, the tragic side, but they're not, not giving us that because they know, uh, they, they're good at this, they know that it's even more disturbing to keep you in this struggle with tension, 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 it never resolves for either way. It feels like you're stuck in an endless struggle. It's very disturbing. Hey, I have more videos just like this one about more music from Bloodborne. I'm gonna put a playlist here with all of those videos and over here I'm gonna put a playlist with all the Soulsborne videos that I have. There's videos there about the music of Dark Souls as well, and even a video about Elden Ring music that I did recently. And remember, whenever you're ready to spread your wings and go on a music journey again, I'll see you there.